morning, everyone. When we say, great is your faithfulness to me, that's called praising God. And what we're doing is reminding ourselves how faithful God is. Uh, uh, many times we can get overwhelmed and, and lose our faith along the way, and I'll tell you why. We start focusing on our situations, and we start focusing on people that sometimes aren't so faithful. And just because you're going through a tough time doesn't mean that God's not faithful. We need to learn how to keep praise in our mouth, victory in our mouth. Come on, hope in our mouth. It's warfare. And what's in your mouth is a byproduct of what's in your heart. That means whatever comes out of your mouth, it was already in your heart. We can know where someone's at by just listening to what they're saying. If they're complaining, they're not in a good place. If they're saying, I'm a victim, they're not in a good place. If they're talking about people, they're not in a good place. Right? If you're talking about giving up, you're not in a good place. But if you could replace those words and just say, by faith, I'm just going to begin to praise God. That means I'm going to magnify him great is your faithfulness to me your breakthrough will begin your change will begin when your conversation changes come on is there anybody that's ready to allow your life and your mouth like david says his praise shall continually be in my mouth not cussing in my mouth not anger in my mouth but praise in my mouth Come on, so I don't know how to praise. You know how to praise your favorite football team. You know how to praise the Dodgers when it's time to score. Da 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 da. Overtime. Da 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 da. Charge. That's what you're supposed to say, Dodger fans. All right? Oh, there he goes. He's, he's ready to go. See you guys? We will do that for our favorite sports team. But it's time to do that for yourself because I'll tell you this when you begin to praise God, you just start a rally on your side. Come on. God says, if my people just acknowledge me in all of their ways, I will make their path straight. Let's give Jesus one more. Praise it. Come on. Your turnaround begins in your praise. Yes, yes, yes. Great is your faithfulness to me. I love that. Get ready. Get ready for a breakthrough today. Get ready for change. You know who gets changed? Those that expect it and ask for it. If you, if you come in here and say, well, see what happens. If you see what happens, you might just get nothing. Like, just go to a restaurant and see what happens if you don't order nothing. Well, let's see what happens. You're going to get nothing, right? But you got to be ready. So I, the, yesterday I ate at um, Famous Dave's. Anybody ever Famous Dave's? I've been there for like years. And I just ended up in that area and I ate there and I, and I ordered me some St. Louis ribs. I'm so glad I did. That was so good. How did I get it? I ordered it. Come on. Is anybody ready to order? Come on. Come on. God says pray. Come on. My house should be called a house of prayer, a house of hope, a house of breakthrough. One more praise to Jesus Christ. Come on. He's your answer. Awesome. Let's pray. And, and we're on the most important subject in the world. And we're going to be talking about love. We were created to be loved by God and love others. That's what life is all about. And if you try to find your fulfillment in any other place but God, you're going to find yourself empty and searching. But nothing will fulfill you like allowing God to love you and then allowing his love to flow through you and love others. Today could be that change for your life. Let's pray, Father. We just thank you for this moment that we have to study your word. Your word's awesome. Your word gives life. The truth is, nothing happens until you say something. The world was without form, it was void, and then you said, let there be light, and there was light. Your word says that your word will not return void. That means when you send it out, it accomplishes everything you send it out to do. When you told Lazarus to come forth out of the de grave, he was dead for four days, he came forth. When you told the lame man to walk and pick up his mat and walk, he walked. 
We just thank you, Lord. When you said to the, the adulterous woman, you're forgiven. I don't condemn you. Where are your accusers? Neither I accuse you. She was forgiven. We thank you, Lord. Today's a new day, Father. We're ready to receive your words. We've received so many words from so many different sources. It's time to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Today I want to talk to you about a subject, and this is the title, Love is a Choice. Say it with me. Love is a choice. The main point in this teaching is love is more than a feeling. It's a choice. Not always do you feel like being loving, but real love is not waiting for the feelings to kick in to be loving. Real love chooses to love even when the feelings aren't there yet. Let's look at scripture here, and Jesus exemplifies this point. And he says this in Luke 22, 42, 22, 42. Says, Father, if you're willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Now, Jesus is ready to go to the cross to suffer and die for every one of our sins. He's praying in the garden, and he has a conversation with the Father, and he says, suffering, pain, death, mocking is in my future. If there's any other way to do this, let's do it that way. But then he says this, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Jesus makes a decision to not let the suffering and the pain deter him from loving God, the Father, and loving us. What drove him to that cross? It wasn't a feeling. Jesus chose to give his life for us, not because he felt like going through all the pain and the suffering. He did it because he loved us and loved the Father. Love is more than an emotion. It is a commitment to do good to others, even when it is not convenient, comfortable, or they're not deserving of it. That's real love. Loving people when they deserve it is not God's love. Anybody could do that. But loving someone when it's inconvenient, it's not comfortable, it's hard, and it takes personal sacrifice is real love. I've learned this. Love is commitment. We can't wait until we feel like doing it. We need to do it, then we'll feel it. Don't wait to feel it to do it. Do it, and then you'll feel it. You can't wait. When you're mature, mature believer, your emotions don't lead you. Truth does. When you're an immature believer, your emotions are constantly taking the driver's seat. This is what happens when we're immature. We're constantly reacting to other people's behavior. You know, we don't have a consistency within our character that's rooted in God's love. A true mature believer, believer's life is rooted in God's love, not circumstances, not situations, and not people. Are there people that get you off track and get you all mad and you say this, you made me mad. So they made you mad. They made you mad. They made you angry. They're making you crazy. Do they have that much power over your life? God is saying, come on, I want to make you loving, but you're going to have to make a choice even when you don't feel it to act right, to do good, share love, forgive. There are times in your life that you're married and you want to go, but you got to stay. Should I stay or should I go? And God says, stay. And what keeps you staying? Love. Love for God and love for you. I don't love him so much. That's okay. Right? You need to choose to forgive. You can't wait till I feel like forgiving you. 
I might feel like hitting you. Or you might feel like hitting them. But you don't. You choose to love. And you choose to be kind. And you choose to be loving. And you choose to be generous. And you choose to serve. Love is a choice, not a feeling. Amen. I'm not saying that when you love someone, you don't feel it. But don't wait to feel it to do it. Do it and then you'll feel it. That's so good. All right. Let's keep going. I'm going to give you a bad example of this love thing. I Really bad, bad, bad example. But I'm telling you it's a bad example. But I'm trying to just illustrate something. I don't like taking out the trash. Does anybody like taking out the trash? Anybody like, I love it. I just can't wait. I, I love it. Right. I, I don't like taking out the trash. Lisa yesterday tells me, um, Marco, we need to take out the trash. <laughs> well, we got four girls in the house. So the natural thing for me to, like, want to say, I didn't say, but I want to say, like, why me? <laughs> There's other people that are able, have two arms. The trash is not that heavy. It might be good exercise for you too. No, I'm just kidding. She ain't here. Is she here? She's gone. Okay, we're good. We're good. Praise the Lord. This is great. But what I did was I went over to the two trash cans, take them out and take them out there. And why do I do that? I do that because taking out the trash is not a feeling. It's a commitment. <laughs> I do it because I love my wife. And the more you love someone, the more you're willing to sacrifice for them. If it's really sacrificial, it's actually an opportunity to show great love. Come on, amen? You guys got that? Okay. So now what I want to do, is, before we get into deeper stuff next week, I want to cover the most important part of choosing to love, love and choice. And the most important about love and choice, that, that love is a choice, is that God loves and chooses us. God loved and chose us. You got to know this. Before you could choose to love somebody else, you must understand this. You need to receive that God loves you and he chooses you. And then out of that love, you could choose to love somebody else. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. You are valuable. You are loved. And you are chosen. I love this. Look at 1 Thessalonians 1.4. It says, Brothers, and I'll say brothers and sisters too. God loves you. Say with me. God loves me. Say with me. God loves me. We must get this right. You'll never pray if you don't believe God loves you. God loves you and he don't only loves you, he is for you. And you might be thinking, I don't deserve it. You don't know what I did last night. I've been failing. And God says, forget about all that. I love you. Someone's going to get a breakthrough today. God loves you. And we know that he has chosen you. I love that. Because he loves you, he's chosen you. Say with me. God has chosen me. I love it. You know, others might have not chosen you. And, and I, I will say this, be careful that you don't let the devil's rejection become your identity. The enemy ha is on an onslaught making people feel like they're unworthy, that they're not good enough, that they're rejected, and he does it through people. And God says, stop focusing on people who rejected you. And the reality is, most of the time, it's not a whole bunch of people that reject you. It's a few people that rejected you. But you can't get your eyes and your mind off of that. And God says, get your mind back on my scripture. I love you and I've chosen you. And look what he says. I've chosen you. He's chosen you. To be his. Oh, I love that. Chosen me to be his? Yeah. I want ownership over you. I want you to be mine. And mine alone. 
So that's kind of crazy, man. Well, let me give you an example. Here's a picture of me and my wife when we got married. Let's see it right here. Boom. Look at that. That's the day we got married. That picture looks like his Elvis days, but it was in the 80s. But I chose her to be my wife. And I told Lisa, will you be my wife? And what God is saying, I choose you to be my child. Will you be my child? Why, why do we go through this? Because God's already chose you. Will you allow him? Will you allow him to choose you? Will you choose him? I love this. And the word love means to love dearly. It means beloved or to be loved. It means to welcome. Welcome. I love this word, welcome and love, because when you really love someone, you're excited to see them. Is there anybody in your life that you love so much that when they enter the room, you get excited? You're your picture, your voice changes. Oh! There are some that enter the room and you don't even notice them. They're like. But there are people that you love so much that when they enter the room, it's celebrate good time. Come. You start being like cooling again. That's the 80s right there. I'm telling you, that's. I got somebody like that in my life. It's little Xander, my grandson. This is him right here. This is, like everything he does is cute. He was brushing his teeth yesterday. Now that's cute. I'm well pleased. The word love is to be well pleased with. Precious. To value. To cherish. To care for tenderly. I love it. God loves you. He cherishes you. He values you. He wants to take care of you tenderly. He cares about your details. He's not disgusted with you. He's chosen you. He's chosen to love you. And he loves you dearly and deeply. You could accept the love or reject it. That's up to you. But after today, you will know this. And why do we talk about this? You got to be careful that there's not a stronghold in your mind that only allows you to receive negative and you can't receive positive. You can receive hate. You can receive bitterness. You can receive failure. All that stuff from the devil. But when God says, I love you, there's something that comes up. Not me. I could speak that God loves you, but I can't say God loves me. I don't even know why he would choose me. Do you know who I am, what I've done, mistakes I've made, what I did last night? That God would love me and choose me? I don't think so. You don't know me. And God says, I know you. And I don't love you because of how good you are. And I don't love you because you've earned it. I love you because I created you and I have a purpose for you. I love you because I am love. You were created for me to love you and love others. Come on. But he says, you're not just love, you're chosen. I love this word chosen. It means to select, to bless. He goes, I've, I've chosen you to select you. I select you. I pick you out from the crowd to bless you. I love it. See, when, when you allow yourself to be loved, like right now, I have a library at home with books. And this thought came into my mind about Xander and how I could bless him. My grandson, I want to bless him. So I go, let's take out some books in the center area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a toy store and put a whole bunch of toys in the middle section. So when he comes, he not just, so, this is what he said. When I see Xander, I go, boy! He goes, pa! And he runs to me. I pick him up, and he wants to play sword fight. And he wants to be David, and he wants me to be Goliath. So the whole time I'm down, I'm just, he's hitting me with a sword that he has, and I fall to the ground, and he keeps hitting me. Why would I do something like that? I would do something like that because I love. 
I want you to get this. God loves you. You don't make him sick. He's happy to see you. And every time you show up, he celebrates you. Come on. There's a party in heaven that you're here in church today. He selected you to bless you. A certain person, select to bless a certain person through Christ by grace alone. It means to pick out a person that is chosen. A person that is chosen. I've been chosen. There's a video here that I, I thought was um, really interesting. I'm going to show you in just a second. Um, for some of you guys watch, is it the Chosen series? Yeah, that's what it is, Chosen. It just so happened that. That, that, that I mean, I, there's a video I saw yesterday, and I go, man, this would be perfect for the series that God chooses us. And I want you to know this, that God chose us before we ever chose him. Don't brag, oh, I chose Jesus. And God said, come on now. You chose me after you, come on, you, you messed up your life. But I was chasing after you before that. I've been chasing after you before you. Come on. Soon as you were born, I've been chasing after you. I love you. And, and you, while you were choosing everything else, I was chasing after you choosing you. We're going to show a video in a second. But look at this. In John 15, 16. You didn't choose me. I chose you. If there's anybody here that believes in Jesus and you're saved and you have a relationship with Jesus and you're a child of God and he's your father, it's only because he chose you. And then you said yes. And you know who he chose? A whole bunch of wrecked sinners. He didn't choose you because your makeup's right. He didn't choose you because you got some money. Be careful. Yeah, that church better be glad I'm part of the church. Relax. Because without Jesus, you'd be going to hell. It wasn't anything that you did to get saved. It was him choosing you while you were in bondage, while you were addicted, while you were doing everything you could to run from God. God was running to you. Aren't you glad that it wasn't you choosing him? He chose you. Someone say this, I'm chosen. Love it. I was chosen the other day to be part of a softball team. <laughs> Yvette told me, called me up. She goes, Pastor, you're going to be this secret weapon. I haven't played for 10 years. No one's going to know you're on the team. The day of the game, I will reveal you. <laughs> I told Yvette, let's do that. Thank you for choosing me. I feel so loved, right? We went to the championship game and lost. But I choose. It was those youth, those teenagers and young adults. They beat us. I told Yvette the next day, rematch. I choose not to go down like that. Let's add some new players to the team. I'm, I'm a Daryl Strawberry might be here next week. <laughs> I know. I got some connections. <laughs> I, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. We were designed to bear fruit as we remain in relationship with him, beyond being saved and one day going to heaven, our purpose on earth is to be productive and bear fruit. He goes, I chose you. And not only chose you, I chose you and empowered you to be fruitful and productive. That word fruit means, it's very simple. What it means is this. It has two as, two. Two points to it. The, the fruit of the spirit to reflect the nature and character of Christ. So when he says be fruitful, what he's saying, you were created to reflect the character and love of Christ, not the devil. You're not here to reflect Satan. You're here to reflect Jesus. 
And until you enter into a relationship with him, this is what's going to happen. Your life is going to be a cycle of non-productivity. Your emotions won't be prosperous. Everything you put your hand to do will have massive frustration on it. Because productivity comes through relationship with Christ. You're created to be loving and kind and gentle, have self-control. That's you. He goes, and if you get connected with me, I choose you, and you accept that call, I'll fill you with my spirit, and you'll be fruitful. Fruitful also means this, the work of saving souls and making disciples. What it means, by the time you're done with this earth, you won't go to heaven alone. You'll go to heaven with some disciples. I pray that you at least have 12 like Jesus, come on, in your whole life. That you would affect someone as Christ has touched your life and changed your life, that someone would see, I know how you were. You were unproductive. You were unfruitful. You were lost. You were depressed. You were angry. You were sarcastic. You were suicidal. But something happened when you went to church and you heard that message. I know what happened. You tell them what happened. I found out that God sent his son to die for me. He chose me and he chose to bless me. He chose to set me free. He chose to give me his joy. He chose to give me eternal life. I accepted it. And what he did for me, he could do for you too. Come on, let's spread some good news. It starts with a choice. We're designed to be connected with Lord. Lord, I, I, the, the, Jesus said this, apart from me, you can do nothing. No one's getting to heaven apart from him. No one's going to be free apart from him. No one's going to have the joy of the Lord without the Lord. No one's going to have the peace of Christ without Christ. Stop. Come the way you are. I love it. I love restoring stuff. Don't you love restoring stuff? I love seeing old cars restored, old homes restored. I, I love seeing the after, the before pictures. And God says, I love doing it too. And the reason you love it is because that's what I do. I take broken down lives, broken down people. I restore them. And then I get all the glory. Come on. God's ready to do something right now. You come the way you are. Take a look at this video real quick. This is a video of Jesus choosing Matthew, which Matthew was a tax collector, which back in those days, tax collectors were considered the highest level of sinners because they were Jews that betrayed their own people and started collecting taxes and taking, and actually taking illegal taxes to make themselves rich. Jesus walking by the tax collector's booth. Matthew's there. Everybody's looking down on him. And then Jesus stops and chooses him. Today, Jesus is stopping and he's choosing you. I hope you accept it. Take a look at this video. I hope you see yourself We're in Matthew. in the same world, Matthew. Next. Besides, what else are you going to do with a mind like yours? Matthew. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. What are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy has done? Do you even know him? Yes. Listen, I said to you. What are you doing? Where do you think you're going, guys? Let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're gonna throw it all away. 
Yes. I don't get it. You didn't get it when I chose you either. But this is different. I'm not a tax collector. Get used to different. <laughs> Come on, isn't that awesome? I, lo I love that line. It's different. He's a tax collector. And Jesus goes, get used to different. Make my day. It's not that you chose him. It's that he chose you. And if you're willing to give up your life, you can find the greatest life that's been right underneath your nose. We're not offering your religion. We're offering your fullness of life, eternal life, forgiveness of sin, freedom, and an experience that you've never had before. Come on. I'm not saying that your life is going to be a bed of roses, but I do know this. You're going to start getting some victories. Even, go through, even if you go through trials, God's going to be with you, and you're going to have some faith, and you're going to have some strength. Come on. You're not going to quit. You're not going to give up. Let's give God some praise that he chose you before you chose him. And this is the last major point. First point we made, God has chosen us based on his love for us. Number two, God chose us before we ever chose him. And number three, God chose to make the first move in the restoration of our relationship with him. His love was proactive, not reactive. He came to us right where we were at. Right at our tax collector's booth. Right in our addiction, right in our failure, right in our depression, when our hearts were broken, when everybody left us, even our family. You didn't come to him, he met you. Not to judge you, to save you, to forgive you, to make you whole. Come on, that's good. He made the first move. God is the one who took the first step. Even though we were the ones that offended him. What I've learned about taking the first step, it's not easy to go and make peace with someone that is not acting right. It's easier to write them off. And God is saying, I didn't write you off. Why are you writing them off so easy? Why are you disowning them? I put you in their lives not to disown them and give up on them. I put you in their lives so I could love them, reach them through you. But don't forget, I've made the first move. Maybe after this service, you need to make a move to reconcile a relationship. And it's not going to be easy because they're in the wrong. And God says, forget about who's wrong or right. The goal is make some peace. This is the last portion of scripture. In Romans 5, 8, and 10. But God showed his great love for us. Love is not just a thought. It's not just a word. It's action. God showed his love for us. By, I, would, I, I put there choosing to send or send in Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. In order to have a relationship with us, there would be a price. And the price would be the death of his son. Imagine desiring a relationship so much that you're willing to give up everything, including your son, to restore that relationship. The reason Jesus needed to die for mankind's sins is because sin came with a price of death. Jesus never sinned, but our sin was transferred to Jesus so it could be paid for so that we can be forgiven and receive new life. Salvation is free to you, but it costs God everything. The value of what something is worth is what you're willing to pay for it. Stop devaluing yourself. And allowing the devil to tell you you're trash, that you're nothing, that you're a failure. It's not true. You are a valuable treasure to God. And the proof is he showed how valuable you are by sending everything to die for you. His son. Look what it says. He sent 
Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. I'm telling you, have you ever done something nice to someone that's been really mean? That's hard. But that's God. You're mean. God says, love them. What? Did he say punch them? No, no, I said love them. You got to be careful as a Christian that you don't turn into a manipulator or a witch. You know what witch does? They put curses on people. And then when it happens, they're like, ooh. <laughs> you got to be careful that you're not enjoying someone else's suffering. Just because they made you suffer, come on, you're not the judge. Let God judge. Let God deal with them. Your responsibility is to love and be kind and forgive. I know it's hard, but that's just how God is with us. Let's end it here. It says, and since we have been made right, say it with me, we've been made right. If you believe in Jesus, you're not going to get right. You're already right. We need to understand that you're righteous because God made you right. You didn't make yourself right. Righteousness is not a reward. It's a gift. Say it with me. I am righteous in Christ. You know what that means? 100% right. Until you get the right perspective that you're chosen and that you're loved and you've been made righteous by faith in Christ, you'll never enjoy your relationship with God because your relationship with God would just be a whole bunch of behavior and you look at your behavior and say, God doesn't love me now because I didn't behave so good. It said, I loved you when you were a sinner. When you want nothing to do with me. When you were my enemy, I gave my best for you. So why are you doubting me now that I'm your father? I've forgiven you. You're my child. Why are you doubting me? I told you, I chose you to bear fruit. And anything you ask of me, I'll give it to you. I want to bless you. Stop getting in the way. I love you. We've got to get rid of that spirit of religion. We have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ. That's the only way to get right. His blood had to be shed. Blood represents life. There was no other way. He had to shed his whole blood, his life, so that you can be forgiven, set free, and redeemed. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of of his son, while we were still enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. Certainly be saved through the life of his son. Certainly be saved through the life, through the life of his son. Saved not by works, but saved through Christ. Faith in Christ, through the life of his son. That's how you're saved. He's chosen you. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God. Because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Say with me, I'm a friend of God. You know what God said? I want to be your friend. I don't want to be your enemy. I want to be your friend. I choose you. I choose, I select you to bless you. I select you to be mine. And if you're mine, I take care of you. When I chose Lisa to be my wife, I'm blessed. She said yes. But she's blessed because she said yes. I've taken Lisa places she never thought she would ever go. The first time Lisa was on a plane was on our honeymoon. We're going places. Baby, I love you. You belong to me and I belong to you. And we're going to be together and I'm going to take you places you've never been. I'm going to blow your mind. A matter of fact, the best days of me and my wife are ahead of us because we're serving God. God's taking us places. I'm taking her. Come on. God said, come on. Let me, let me show you some stuff. Right? And then with this, we, um, there's a young man this, this week that I met. His name's Dion. And right now they're watching. Him and his grandfather are watching right now in, in Compton. This is Dion. Dion is a second or third generation gang member in Compton. Um, he's lived a life of complete violence, surrounded with death, pain, crime. That's all he's known. When our team went over there to his block, out of all the blocks in L.A., we ended up on his block 
block. And what's crazy about, about Dion, his cousin has been going to our church for years. And now we're knocking on his cousin's door and start telling him about Jesus. It wasn't that G G G Dion chose Jesus. Jesus chose him and met him right in his hood, right? Dion, <clears throat> the month we met him was in January of this year. He just got shot the month before. They shot eight times at him at really close range and only one bullet hit him. He's alive. And when we met him, he was smoking a blunt every time we talked to him. Matter of fact, this is what happened. We'd come as we started talking to him because faith comes by hearing. God will work with you and keep reaching out to you. Don't wait till it's too late because time could run out. But thank God, we just kept going and going and Dion's faith began to grow. The first times he would take the blunt and put it away and then our team told him, don't take the blunt and put it away because we don't want you to be religious. Be who you are. Let us give you the message and let the message transform your life. That's what we told him. Because we don't want you to be, every time we come, you hide the blunt and every time we go, you light it up. We want you to be free. So we kept coming because Jesus kept coming while he was still a sinner, while he was still gangbanging. While he's still getting high, while he's still angry, while he's still upset, while he's still taking revenge, Jesus met up with him. Well, now, Dion is saved. He's born again. It took a while. He couldn't believe that God would choose him. It took us a long time for us to convince him that God could forgive a person like him. He says, God can't forgive me. No, me? You know what? I, no way. I said, yeah, a matter of fact, the guy that wrote Romans, he was a killer. He used to kill Christians, and God saved him, and then he wrote the majority of the New Testament. And if God could save him, he could save you. Come on, gangster. Give your life to Jesus. Come on, there's somebody knocking at your door. Come on, come on, there's somebody knocking on your door, and he loves you, and he selected you to bless you. To give you purpose so you could go back into your neighborhood and reach those that need to be reached. Well, this is what happened. It was four weeks ago. Dion said this. Um, I want to stop smoking. I want to stop lighting up. He goes, Let, let's pray. So I talked to him. And I did an interview with him. We'll, we'll cover it another week. But I, I talked to him. I, and he goes... I don't smoke anymore. No one could believe it. No one, I, 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 I asked him in an interview, I go, Dion, why don't you smoke? Why don't you light it, light it up? No, what, what's going on? He goes, I have no more urge. Come on. When Jesus sets you free and he chooses you, he delivers you, he gives you purpose, you come with your blood, you come with your addiction, you come with your failure, and there's a God that can resurrect you and give you new life. Give God one more praise. Let's all stand up. I love it. He loved you while you were still a sinner. You know why it's important for you to know that? So you'll never doubt that he loves you, especially after you've given your life to Jesus. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. You know what that means? In Christ, if you place your faith in Christ, you are saved, you are born again. But I pray that you'll be like Matthew today. As he chooses you. No one would have chosen him. God chose. Matthew, come on, Matthew. Follow me. Are you willing to give up the life that you have now so you can have a new life? I know it's kind of scary crossing that bridge because there's some things that we're dependent on. Say, ah, I can't do it. And, and this is what God's going to say to you. I know you can do it, but I can do it in you. The miracle isn't that you could stop smoking weed. The miracle is I can set you free and take away the urge and make you a new person, put new desires in you. That's the miracle. And this idea, if God could do it for Dion, come on, he could do it for you. It's the same God. Say with me, I am chosen. I am loved. And God's taking the first step.
knocked on your door and said, hey, let's make this right. But you don't know what I'm doing. I, I know. I know ready. That's what I specialize in. I'm a restorer. I love you. All I've chosen, I just want you to be mine. And I want me to be yours. I want to do this now and forever. I'm telling you, anything that you're exchanging for Jesus, you're getting ripped off. You're so valuable. He's so valuable. This is your day. Let's pray. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Christian. I'm gonna have my friend Christian pray with us. But this, this is your day to respond. Will you do like Peter? And he says, Me? Yeah, you. Come. Don't be ashamed. Be willing to leave it all behind. God's looking right now. He's chosen you. You've done all the work. You're a yes away from your life being transformed. You come the way you are and watch God begin to develop you into a new person, a new thought process, and begin to restore areas that are broken. It can happen today. Awesome. Let's give the Lord one more hand. He's a good God. Come on. Can we give God praise for that word this morning? How many received that today? God loves you so, so much. He loves you so much that there's nothing you can do to make him love you less. He loves you right now, right where you are. And he loves you so much that he's willing to give you a new start, a new beginning. You know, the truth is we've all messed up. We've all been enemies of God as we looked at in the scripture earlier. Why are we enemy of God? Because we've sinned against him. We've rejected him. We've disobeyed him. We've turned our backs on him. And what's, what's scary is we can even be coming to church and still live life as an enemy of God. What God is saying is, I made a way for you. You know, but the truth is, because we've sinned against God, there's a price that we owe. And that price, the only way we can pay for the sin we've committed is this word, death, which means eternal separation from God. The way we pay for our sin is hell for eternity. This is not the way God intended for you. This is not the way. So what did God do? He loved you so much that he gave his son to die for you. In other words, he gave Jesus to pay the price that you owed for our, for our sin. We owed death, but Jesus paid it. We should have been on that cross, but Jesus paid it. We should have ended up in hell forever, but Jesus paid the price for us and stole the keys from death and defeated sin and death forever so that we can be saved and set free. So does that mean I have to be a really good person? No. Does that mean I have to go out and kick my addiction and come back and present myself as a good person before God? No. Does that mean I have to live perfectly in order for God to love me? No. What should I do to be saved? Put your faith in Jesus Christ today. Put your faith in the love that gave everything for you. Today is the day for you to be saved. Today is the day for you to give your life to Jesus. We don't know if we'll be alive tomorrow. This is the scary truth. We don't know if we'll be alive even another hour. Don't gamble with your eternity. Don't play games with where you'll end up. Today, make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. After all, he's already chosen you and given his life for you because he loves you. Will you choose him back? Will you say yes to the love that he's showing you today? Yes to his forgiveness. Yes to salvation. Yes to freedom from addiction and pain. Yes to healing in your body and in your heart. Will you say yes to his righteousness forever and ever? Let's say yes to God today. What I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you, if you're saying that's me, I need to say yes to Jesus, yes to his love. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand when I count to three. And in this moment, I don't want you or any voice from the enemy or anybody around you to keep your hand down. If you know that's you, the Holy Spirit right now is tugging on your heart. And he's saying, I've chosen you. I'm calling you. And I want you to be free. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand and say, that's me. That's me. Are we ready, church? When I count to three, one, you're saying, that's me. I want to receive Jesus Christ today. Two, 
You're saying, that's me. I need forgiveness of my sins, and I want to accept the love of Jesus and make him the Lord of my life. If that's you, let's raise our hands today. One, two, three. All over this room, raise your hand. You're saying, that's me. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you up here. I'm proud of you guys. You're saying, that's me. I'm proud of you. I see you too. I see you three right there. Anybody else? I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you right there. Anybody? I saw you back there. Anybody else? I see you back there in this row. I see you, brother. I see you. Anybody else? I see you guys. Anybody else? We see you. We see you. We see you. We're proud of you. We see the hand. We see you right there. We see you. We're proud of you. Let's do this. For those that just raise your hand, I want to say you're making the best decision of your life. Do me a favor really quick. Will you make your way in the aisle just for a moment and come up here to the front so that we can congratulate you and pray with you? Church, can we get excited for everyone that raised their hand today? Even in the back row, if you raise your hand, just make your way to the aisle for a second and you can come forward and we're going to pray with you. Church, let's get excited in this moment. Today, people are getting saved. They're giving their life to Jesus this morning. Let's praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. same. Today's the day you give everything to Jesus today. Today's the day. Hallelujah. They're still coming up, church. They're still coming. Let's give them a hand as they come forward. Right now, for those that just came up, I want you to look at me for a second. Everyone that just came up, just look at me for a quick second. We love you. God loves you so much. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for your life. There's nothing, there's nothing you've done. There's nothing that has happened. There's not even a, a situation you're in right now that's too difficult for God to handle. He's got you. And we're gonna help you in this process. We're not gonna leave you hanging. We're gonna pray with you. And we're gonna guide you and disciple you teach you okay this is the beginning this isn't the end this is the beginning of your new life so just like a baby we got to learn how to walk we got to learn how to run we got to learn how to talk now that we're living our new life okay so you have a next step your next step is to get baptized someone say baptized and when you're baptized you're laying your old life down under the water and you're coming up a brand new creation just like we've seen those 56 people get baptized today you're going to get baptized too and then your next step is also a class called Holy Warriors. Some say Holy Warriors. In this class, we're going to disciple you. We're going to train you. We're going to show you how to live out your Christian walk with God, how to study the Bible, how to pray, how to walk with God. What, what are the things that are going to keep me strong, that can fight this fight? We're going to train you in that. The person in front of you is going to pray with you, okay? They're going to pray with you, and they're going to help you get signed up for these next steps, okay? So we're gonna be right there with you. I'm gonna need a lot more leaders up here. If you're a discipleship group leader, now's the time to come forward right now. We're gonna need a lot more people to come up and pray. I wanna make sure that everyone up here has someone to pray with. They're coming right now. If you're a leader, a discipleship group leader, we're gonna need you up here, altar leader. We're gonna need you up here. We have quite a few people up here. I wanna make sure everyone has someone to pray with up here. So we have a section right over here. Thank you so much, leaders. Thank you so much, leaders, for serving and caring for souls. This is what it's all about right here. Thank you. Let's pray. Let's pray in this moment. I want everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. Bow your head and close your eyes. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. You ready? Say this with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for saving me for setting me free without you my life is empty so I put my faith in you I give you my everything I believe in you Jesus I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose from the dead to set me free to purchase my salvation from this day forward my life belongs to you thank you 
for your forgiveness, for salvation, and for a new start. Fill me with your spirit. My life is yours. I'll never be the same. Thank you for your love. Help me to follow you, to live for you, to obey you, and to never to turn back. I repent from the old way, and I turn to you. Thank you, God, for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray, and we all say amen and amen. Let's give God a little praise today. Go ahead and altar leaders, go ahead and connect and pray with them. Let's help them get signed up. Church, don't forget, God's doing great things right now. Don't forget the five ways you can get connected today. Women, sign up for the women's conference in the foyer. LU is launching next week. You can sign up in the foyer as well. If you're a young adult, we want to see you this Friday at 7 p.m. If you're interested in signing up for the marketing, the creative rally here, you can sign up. It's going to be in the South Hall at 3 p.m. This Wednesday, Pastor Marco is going to continue the series that we're in on the end times. And we're hitting heavy topics like homosexuality and abortion. What does the word say about it? Where are we with that? What's going on? We're going to talk about those things this Wednesday night. Church, we love you so much. Remember, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. Have a wonderful Sunday, church. If you need prayer, come on up. We would love to pray with you. God bless you, church. We love you.